Hey guys, happy Friday and thank you so much for joining us for Social Pulse Weekly. And you know what's really exciting? We're having the weather worlds and the social media worlds kind of colliding today. And what's kind of crazy about that is we weren't even sure if the show was going to happen because I lost power from Hurricane Zeta very early yesterday morning, had no power for the rest of the day. I didn't get it back until early this morning, and I wasn't sure if we were going to be able to do the live show. I was going to have internet. So the fact that we're here and it's the weather worlds from the UK and the United States colliding and geeking out about TikTok, like, I feel like we can make something happen. But I just want to say cheers to everyone. Juan Santiago, I see you. Happy Friday. Happy Halloween. We hope you're doing amazing and wonderful. And for those of you who are joining us, let us know who you are and what you're going to be for Halloween. I want to know what you're going to be. And with that said, get ready and pumped and hopefully get in costume because we have our live virtual Halloween party with some fun trivia and giveaways right after this in our Facebook group. But first, Let's dive right into our amazing show sponsor, Ashley Graham. And we have to thank everyone. Ashley, you're amazing. You're going to see her in the comments. She is incredible. So Ashley is a brand strategist and publicity expert who has a passion for coffee, media collaborations, and connections. And if you're not following her already, you need to. And you can find her on basically all the social channels at Your Brandista. And so if you're not following her, make sure to do that right now. Just get your cell phone out and start following her. But let's now talk about some social media news. There's been some exciting stuff this week, guys. And can you believe it's the end of October? I can't believe it either. And it's it's a spooky time. It's a weird time. We have our second full moon of the month tomorrow. So on Halloween, all weird things, but exciting things at the same time. So let's first get to TikTok news. This is kind of a big deal. Now, TikTok keeps innovating like it's been doing and it keeps growing. And if you haven't gotten an account on TikTok yet, you need to at least reserve your name or your handle so you have it. Even if you're not sure what to post yet, get an account so you can observe what other people are doing, like our guests. Because if you're not following the Met Office on TikTok, you need to be. But we're going to get to that in just a little bit. But um, this week, TikTok announced a global partnership with Spotify. Now, this is huge. It's going to help more than 1 million merchants create and run campaigns directly geared toward TikTok highly engaged community. So if you're thinking about, okay, I don't know really about the TikTok thing. The fact that it keeps innovating is partnering with Shopify and people are making purchases based on what they're seeing on TikTok. It's something to think about. And especially with this now partnership, this global partnership with Spotify, think about getting on TikTok because there's lots of opportunity there. Now, our second news topic of today, um, of this week, for those of us that go live on Instagram, you can now go live for four hours straight, not just 60 minutes. They extended it to four hours, which is so exciting and so amazing. And so if, if you're doing kind of a yoga class, you're teaching something and you're just worried about that limit, you don't have to stress about that anymore because it goes straight into four hours. Along with that, you it'll save that, your, your live video, for 30 days. Um, and when you directly download it now, you'll be able to see the comments and reactions and everything else before it wasn't able to do that. So huge news for Instagram live creators. Um, if you're not going live on Instagram, it may be something to test out. But the fact that they extended it from 60 minutes to four hours, you can now have 30 days to download it. And when you download it, you can see the comments and reactions is huge. So that's something to think about. And if you are doing Instagram Lives, maybe you can extend that time even a little longer because when you go live and the longer you have the lives, usually the better it goes up in the algorithm and it just helps out that much more because not everyone will be able to join your live right when you're exactly live. They may have meetings or other things going on. So the longer you're live, the more opportunity you have for other people to join and watch you go live. So that's some great news um, from Instagram. So cheers to that. Cheers to a lot of good social media news. And along with that, YouTube has revamped its mobile app with new gestures, video chapter lists, 
and more. So all of you YouTubers out there, and if you're not on YouTube, you definitely need to be on YouTube. It's a great platform where you can answer questions about something specific with a service or product that you offer. But also if there's a generic, you know, industry questions that you can answer, you can do that on there as well, because I search YouTube all the time for all the how to's where it's how to fix my faucet, how to do this, how to sew a dress or something. I do it. So they are rolled, they rolled out a series of updates. Now video chapters was introduced earlier this year in May. And those chapters are automatically enabled as a line of timestamps and titles based on chapter information. The creator adds to their videos description beginning at basically the zero segment. But now they've extended that feature to include a new list view that lets you see a complete list of all the chapters included in the video, each with their own preview thumbnail, which is very huge because storytelling is one of the biggest things now in marketing and will continue to be because we all have our own unique story. And that's how you're truly going to stand out as a brand, as an entrepreneur. So you can access the list view by tapping or clicking on the chapter title in the player, then jump to the part of the video you want to see by tapping the video chapter in the list. So how cool is that? Also, they're updating their player page. Uh, to make captions more accessible, it's moving the button to a more prominent position on mobile phones. The autoplay toggle has been moved as well, so it's easier to turn it on or off while you're watching a video. Um, and this is a change that will roll out to desktop users soon. So there's a lot of fun things going on. And we've shared some of these articles within our Facebook group and also on our social channels. So if you're not following us on all of our social channels and a part of our Facebook group, Social Pulse Community, definitely join. Now, let's start geeking out about TikTok, right? Because TikTok is one of those things that's blown up this past year. People are still kind of unsure, okay, so how do we navigate TikTok? It's different from everything else. It's constantly growing, exponentially growing, and you probably want to be a part of it. And we've got two exceptional creators that are joining us from the Met office in the UK. And then they've created viral videos and their account is incredible. So if you want to know what I'm talking about while I'm introducing each of them, go to TikTok. If you don't have it already, download it and just get it on your phone. But search Met office on TikTok and you will see what I'm talking about. But the first person first of two guests, we have Emma Lawrence. She's a design intern. Um, she recently joined the Met Office content team for a year's in-house design experience, experience as part of her studying at Lowboro University. Emma, I maybe totally butchered that. Emma is studying at their Creative School of Arts specializing in graphic communication and illustration. Emma is helping to bring fresh ideas for communicating across social media and is involved in the development of content for the Met Office partnership with Facebook around climate change and TikTok for education. So these are things that I'm going to be asking them about. The fact that they're partnering with Facebook about climate change and TikTok for education, and they're doing a lot of educational pieces. Now, let's talk about Ross Middleham here. Um, he's the content and social lead for the Met Office at the UK. He leads design and video production, ensuring the Met Office creates engaging, informative, and highly high quality content which tells a consistent story across their range of social and communication channels. He's responsible for the day-to-day -day messaging, creation, and publishing, joining up ideas and activities, and setting the direction across their social channels, which have over 1 million combined followers. Wow. His design background helps to bring clarity to complex scientific messages to produce relevant and impactful content for the public, ultimately helping them stay safe and able to thrive. With all of that said, you guys, I can't, can you wait to not wait to meet them? Because I can't. Bring them on, Mike, Emma, Ross. How are you guys doing from across the pond? And first of all, thank you so much because it is six o'clock on a Friday evening for you guys. You guys should be out at a pub or doing something safely, socially distanced, enjoying yourself, but you're joining us. And I'm so excited that you're here to geek out with us. So how are you guys doing? We're good. 
Yeah, you're thank, you. thank you for having us. Yes, you're welcome. You're welcome. And we've got so many great people in the house. We've got George in the house. And again, if you have any kind of questions, feel free to ask them. Scott Ayers, our content scientist. This is um, basically a two-way conversation. We never want any of our lives to be just, you know, you all fly on the wall um, and us just being talking heads. If you have questions about TikTok, what they're doing, how to create content, strategy, all of that, this is your opportunity to ask. And there's never a silly question. I'm sure a lot of people have the same questions as you. So with that said, let's dive right in. And I would love to hear, and I know I, I read it in your bios, but um, really quick, both Emma and Ross, I mean, you can go first. Um, basically, how did you get to where you are today? I know you're you know, still in school, but design and everything, and maybe some of the highlights of what you've done at the Met Office so far. Yeah, okay, so I'm between my second and third year at university at Loughborough, um, and I'm studying graphic design there, um, and I wanted to do a year in industry, so I applied to the Met Office, and I've been here since the end of July. I'm just here for a year, and I think what really attracted me to the Met Office particularly is the amount that they do to help people to stay safe in all the communications they do across social media, and that was just something that I really wanted to be a part of. I have actually quite an academic background as well as a creative one. So that excited me about the Met Office, that I could create awesome creative content that was about something really interesting. Um, I think some of my highlights really have just been helping out wherever I can and getting involved in lots of opportunities that Ross has kindly thrown my way um, <laughs> every week. <laughs> um, I've got involved with lots of things and TikTok particularly. I mean, the success that they've managed to achieve in such a short amount of time has been amazing and it's been great to be a part of lots of sort of ideas um, and brainstorming sessions to come up with just new ways to reach new audiences really it's been great i love that that's awesome and so what is it like really to work under ross i'm just kidding i'm just kidding you don't have to <laughs> look at ross <laughs> so it the right way <laughs> it's amazing it's amazing so um ross i would love to hear from you 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 have a very interesting amazing background and this is um mike our producer uh has pulled up the screen so you guys can take a look at tiktok and what the met office is doing they're verified they have several uh viral videos and the the Halloween one is absolutely epic, but they use all the different features and they educate in a fun way, which is probably why TikTok came to them. And they're like, all right, let's talk to you guys about how we can work on education and TikTok for education. But Ross, um, just give us a, a little brief uh, understanding and description of why you started working at the Met office and just some of the awesome things you've done. Yeah, certainly. I uh, studied new media production back at university. So at the time that was interactive design and um, and it was all about the kind of UX back in the day. So how to get people interested in the sort of thing that you're doing. Uh, I then went from there to an agency and I worked five years at an agency um, and then moved to the Met Office, who were at the time advertised for a new media designer. Uh, so I would have been crazy not to apply for that role. I worried that I might just be designing weather symbols the whole time, but it's been anything but that. I have been doing all sorts from the app to uh, social media and pushing that forward and generally just making things happen and trying to communicate our safety messages to as many people as possible. I love that. And there's nothing ever wrong, Ross, with designing weather symbols. I feel like those are some of the most exciting ones. Um, and, and I love like, so you guys know, for anyone who's watching, I'm actually a meteorologist um, by trade. And I also, between weather and social media, I love it because they're always constantly changing. Um, and I, I think I just love just flowing in that change, right? I don't like, if I'm not doing something or even like on vacation, it's hard for me to relax because I just, I have to do something and be active. So I, I love this, the whole combination of weather. Um, and I would love to know, and we've actually got a great question right here. Um, Stephen Love said, is there a good video tutorial source that shows you how to create TikTok videos? So we actually have a couple of different blog posts, Stephen, and maybe Deb, you can find those, maybe a couple links that we have um, to some of the TikTok blogs. Um, and I, I'm not sure if it's quite specific to that, but Ross and Emma, do you have any resources that you would recommend for Stephen on just how to create some basic TikTok videos? Yeah, I think my advice is to download the app and start looking at what people are doing, to be honest. 
don't don't rely too much look at the tutorials and i'm sure you've got some great ones but actually look at what people are producing uh and get yourself on the platform and and that's the best advice and steven one of the best things about TikTok is you can test things out and you can create an account or if you've already created an account um you can just you can save things as drafts or if you're not really following anyone and nobody really sees your account, you can just create some videos, just testing things out without too many eyes on them. And, and something to keep in mind is we all start at zero, right? None of us come into an app, a social media app as an expert. We're all learning at the same time and we're all continuing to learn different things. So, and that's a phenomenal question. Um, and I love that Brian says, just press the damn button because that's what you do. Just do it. Create your first video as goofy and silly as it is. And you never know, it could go viral because that's this crazy thing, um, you guys, that I've, I've seen with a lot of different people. They'll create one video, they're like, they put their effort into it and they think it's gonna go viral and it doesn't. And then it's some random silly one they do with their kid that people pick up on. And you know, a TikTok elevates it, which is so interesting. Um, and, and Brian said too, the best way is to test and watch on TikTok, which is very true. Um, and one thing I would like to hear from you, um, both of you guys, uh, is what is a typical day like for you when it comes to content creation? Because I know a lot of us are solopreneurs, entrepreneurs, we're small teams. How do you guys coordinate and work together? And especially when it comes to weather, it's always changing, but I know there's some consistent and evergreen content as to why we have the seasons, why we get these different storms, but what is your kind of content uh, creation strategy look like? Absolutely, Emma, do you mind if I kick off and then you yeah, chip in? Let's go through the day um, the editorial, I'd say. Absolutely, yeah. So we're a very small team actually uh, in terms of the uh, content team. So there's only 10 of us and that includes designers, videographers, studio operators and uh, some full-time presenters as well. Um, what we do is have, we act like a newsroom, if I'm honest. So we're very much looking at what the story is for the day. Uh, and we meet twice daily. Our main editorial is in the morning uh, and we get experts from around the office alongside our content and creative team. And we work out what that story is and how we're gonna tell it across our channels. It's really important for us to tell a consistent story. We really need, uh, we can't be saying it's snowing over on Instagram and it's, it's raining over on TikTok. So we need to really make sure that that consistency is happening. And we work out what bits of content we're going to create and then when and how and who's going to create those bits. I love that. And Emma, what would you like to add to that? What is your main role um, at the Met Office? Um, I think something that I particularly like to think that I add is just some new fresh ideas. There's a lot of people at the Met Office that, no offense, have been working there for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> Ross is going to hate me for saying that. That's okay. Um, we have the real Emma. Keep going. Keep going. <laughs> um, and I like to think, you know, sometimes I might add an idea that's completely new and different um, where things at the Met Office that might have been running the same for a few years and it might just be, you know, a random idea that thought, oh, could we do this? Um, I like to think that's sort of what I bring sometimes just to the team. I'm not afraid to just say any idea, even if it doesn't end up being the right one or a good one, really. I love that, Emma. And I love the fact of brainstorming ideas. Some of the best ideas have come from, I guess, you, what you could say, or some might say bad ideas, but like throwing things out there. Um, I love it. And it's funny, when I um, spent time at the Weather Channel, we had our two meetings, our primary meeting, editorial meeting was in the morning as well. We had a secondary one just following up on what the new model runs and everything showed. Um, but we did very similar which is actually really neat and cool to hear. Um, and I love that whole strategy. And really quick, we have Ashley Graham saying, TikTok is also a great place for community, which is true. Using sounds and music that others have used in going viral has helped boost posts. Ashley, that is a great tip. And if you're not following Ashley on TikTok, do it. Um, and Brian said, love that, act like a newsroom. And Steven said, I have had the app for a while. I just don't know how to use it to create content. I can consume content and search for content, but I don't know how to create it. Also, I am more of an audio visual learner, hence video tutorials, Ooh, which is fantastic. So uh, Steven, I will try and see what I can find. And I don't know if Emma and Ross, you have any kind of um, individual from your YouTube page that you've created as a, a video tutorial for TikTok. Um, but that is an opportunity and Stephen will work on that some more. We can have a side one off conversation about that. Um, 
But okay, Emma and Ross, your TikTok is amazing. I know you probably started it and you're like, let's just test this out and see what happens. And then you're like, crap, we're actually really good at this. We're verified. We have viral videos. Tell us about your strategy, like how you plan it out. Do you do one a day, two a day? Um, do you plan it out on a monthly basis, uh, a weekly basis? I know with the weather, obviously that changes in you know forecast after three days out are, can really change widely. How? What is your strategy for TikTok? How do you guys plan out that content? I think the important thing to start with, and I think you'll agree, Emma, is that we, we've been on it for uh, a while. We've been watching it. And we've been experimenting on it for over a year. Uh, and the important thing for us as, as the Met Office in the United Kingdom is to make sure that we were, if we we're going to be on there creating content, publishing content, it was serving a purpose and it was true to our purpose. And we're all about uh, keeping people safe and saving lives and uh, meaning that they can thrive. So uh, there was no point for us to create content that didn't didn't do that, to be honest. Um, and... TikTok's evolved. So TikTok, 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 easy for me to say, um, has, is no longer just a dance video platform um, where it moved into the kind of uh, verticals of uh, so cooking and learning content. And then suddenly we saw that opportunity, actually, that aligned with our purpose of teaching people about the weather and actually educational content. So we actively tried to um, to reach out to TikTok to to speak to them, get contacts, and then work with them to create a partnership. Uh, Emma, do you want to talk about how many times a day we post and that kind of side of things? Yeah, sounds good. Um, so at the minute, we post twice a week, normally on a Monday and a Friday. Um, ideally, we would like to post more, but we just don't quite have the resource to at the moment. Um, so that's something we are look, sort of working on at the moment at the moment to try get posting more. But obviously, these things take time. I think something we're learning at the moment is that maybe they don't have to be as polished and as thought out. Maybe we can just, you know, throw one together and just just go for it. Um, I think that's really a really important thing about TikTok is to just take a risk. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. You've just got to try things and go out there and just start start posting, really. And you soon learn what works and what doesn't work. And I love that. And it's all about, uh, like we talked about before, uh, just testing it out and seeing, like you said, what works and what doesn't work. Um, first of all, I would love to know why you post, I think you said on Monday and Friday. Um, but also when it comes to, I guess, your talent and the meteorologist, do they have a say? And how do you pick the different, the features and the, the music and stuff? Do you actually break it down? Hey, here, here, and here, we want you to do this. Talk about like a tornado this way. Or do, like, how does that actually work out with you guys? So our meteorologists are absolutely content cre creators as well, to be honest. Um, they are presenters, but they understand social. Uh, the beauty is that they know, they do storytelling. So if you look at traditional TV forecasts, it's all about storytelling and telling people about what's happening. It's no different to social. They've just got less time to do it. And they're really, really skilled at doing that. And they've been doing that for us across other social platforms for years. And so TikTok's no different, to be honest. Um, they are they have a lot of creative freedom and we, we share our proofs and workings using a WhatsApp group. And then we allow us so we can all chip in as a team and go, hey, we think that's working or how's about doing this? Uh, but they often lead the way. We decide on the topic in that editorial, but then they'll lead the way in terms of the creative look. Oh, that's awesome. That's really cool. And I love that. And weather is about storytelling, telling a story from the beginning to the end, usually about like two to three minutes, but that's exactly how it is. And I love that. And huge shout out to Tristan, who's joining us from across the pond as well. Um, he says TikTok is hu has huge potential and opportunity, which it does. I'm so glad you're here. And um, we got a great question here from George. He said, do you still offer social media online courses? Yes, we do. We have our social media manager school. And I'm going to ask our amazing community manager, Deb, again. I love you, Deb. She's amazing. Give Deb some love, some hearts in the comments, please, um, for just sharing things because she's fantastic um, when she joins the lives and does this. So right there is our social media manager school um, where we have all sorts of trainings and learnings. You can get your certification in social media and everything. Um, but Tristan, so glad you're here. Um, and so Ross and Emma, with that said, 
I would love to know what are your three biggest lessons you've learned so far on TikTok where you're just like, okay, um, we, we got to use these hashtags or do it this way or make sure we do that. W what are some of the biggest lessons that you've learned? I'll jump in if that's all right, Ross, some of mine. Um, I really think something we've learned is that you've got to be really snappy with the first few seconds. Um, I think at the start, we maybe took too long to get to our point of what we were talking about. So really trying to hook that audience in in those first few seconds has been really important for us. Um, and also, we, you know, been trying to keep them quite short because we tend with some of them, obviously some some of our TikToks, we need to create longer content. We had to explain everything we want to, as such as if it's about a storm or something complex like that. If it's short content, you know, about, you know, l how does, how do autumn leaves change color, like all about that. We might try to keep that short to 30 seconds so that we don't lose our audience interest. Because um, TikTok sort of said to us, sometimes people will tend to drop out if it's too long. So for a lot of us, we try to keep it to 30 seconds. And then as I said, it's all about that sort of hook at the start. I really think has been important for us. I don't know if you've got anything to add, Ross. Yeah, for me, it's it's definitely, it's all the things you said, but it's also about uh, getting connections with other people, not being afraid to speak to others, people, content creators who you like and, and admire, speak to them about how they're doing it. How are they working out their, their publishing schedule? How are they creating their content? And then also actively, uh, for us, actively getting in contact with TikTok and working out if there was a way that the, the two organizations could work together to really uh, make the most of the content that we could produce. So I think, um, yeah, making connections and learning from others is really, really important, but that goes across all social channels. And that's very true. And those are such good points. Um, and along with that, Brian um, said, treat the first three seconds like a blog post title or email newsletter subject line, which is really good. And also um, where you can, you know, fix uh, whatever thumbnail you want. Thumbnails are so important as well. If there's a funny, silly eye catching one, I'm like, whoa, what's happening over there? Um, and, and I think the horizontal, I love the horizontal tornado one. Um, the talent you guys have, they're so amazing. I love them. Um, Alex is just hilarious, but, um, but that's so critical and so important as well. Um, and with that said, and you talking about partnering with TikTok on education. I'm not sure if you're allowed to talk about it or not, but I would love to hear more about did TikTok come to you and what you're specifically working on with TikTok and maybe some examples um, that you can, the different video types that you can share with us where we can go to your page and see what you're doing. Yeah, well, actually it was a, it was mutual benefit to be honest. We, uh, we both uh, got together, started chatting and said, is there something in it for both of us? Uh, and as I said, the purpose didn't really align until we saw the opportunity with the education um, and the fact that TikTok would begin to invest in that type of content. So uh, we actually partnered with them on the hashtag learn on TikTok content. So um, we, like we say, we, we put out two posts a week and then they help, help to give us advice. So once we've posted, we notify them and they feed back on the content that we're producing in order to make it better and more engaging for the audience, but also to help us with our reach. Our remit is to is not just to tell some people what the weather's gonna be like, it's to tell everybody. We wanna keep everybody safe. So we need to reach as many people as possible with our messaging. And that's why we're on TikTok, because people are on TikTok. Uh, it's the platform that people are consuming information. So if the Met Office weren't on there, they would be missing a whole demographic, a whole chunk of, of people uh, with our messages. Oh, so with, I love the fact that they, you guys get to critique, um, they critique you on what you can do to, to improve. Um, can you give us a couple of examples of what they said? Hey, make sure to do this or don't do this um, directly from TikTok. Definitely. They, they love the presenters as well, which is, which is what you've just commented on. So Alex and Aiden have done a, a great job. Um, they, uh, Emma, you touched upon the fact about the length of the video. That was something that they came back with and advised us to keep it under 30 seconds. Uh, and also, as you were talking about, titles are, are crucial, titles and thumbnails, and really signposting your bit of content up front to catch people's attention, to keep them watching. 
I love that. So those are and those are such great tips. And you guys have several viral videos as well. Um, what do you you know say is the reason for that success? Were you purposely like you know what we're going to create this and we know it's going to do really good, or was it by accident, which can happen to a lot of people? Where you focus on one post and you're just like I think this is going to be awesome and it's not, and then like one you take a couple seconds and it's amazing and it blows up. Um, what are your kind of secrets for success? for really things doing really well and kind of blowing up on TikTok? I think something that's been really important for us is to try show the personality of the presenters because they're great. Um, and particularly because we're trying to aim it at a much younger audience than it's typical of the Met Office. Um, so I think on the ones where we really show their personality, that's worked really well because um, it's important to just sort of, I think, with the metal, it's important to humanize the brand a little bit um, and try show their personalities whilst still communicating really important messages. Um, I think one video that did particularly well was our Storm Francis one, which was really nice for us because we got almost 500k views from it, um, which is amazing. Um, and we, what we really liked about that video is that people started to take action based on watching that video, based on the comments. So some of them were quite jokey, like some of the kids were saying, I'm going to have to tie down my trampoline now because Storm Branson is coming or I'm going to get wet on the walk to school and things like that, which but it still shows that even the younger audience is starting to take action based on the videos that they've watched from us, which is great because that is what we're trying to do. Gosh, I love that. And one of my favorites is the announcing of the storm names. Um, and I believe Aiden was on the list um, and he was so clever and so fun with that. He's like, is your name on the list? Um, and, and that was really great. And something that, you know, uh, our government doesn't name storm systems. Uh, our National Hurricane Center names hurricanes, but we do not name as a government. Um, the government of the United States does not name different kind of storm systems. The Weather Channel does. Um, so that makes things a little confusing, but I love that. That's one of my favorite videos. So you should watch it if you haven't. Um, and so uh, let's see, Tristan says, um, how irrespective of a platform, it's always about storytelling, which is true. And storytelling is huge because like, Brian Fanzo says, you are the, you only have your own story. You own your story. No one else can tell your story. And that's what makes you unique. So you should tell it. And especially when it comes to weather, um, you're telling a story every single day, every single forecast. Um, and he also says completion of the TikTok is very heavily weighted. It's awkward for me not to end a video, but quick endings increase completion time, which is true. So that's a good point with the algorithm. Now, I would love to know from you, um, especially, you know, talking about Stephen had some great questions. And for those people that, yes, okay, they have a TikTok account, they're observing, but what to do with strategy, what advice would you give someone um, just starting out on TikTok when it comes to planning out content, strategy, testing things, you know, and, and if they're a little timid and, and a little scared of testing things, what is your best advice? I think I would start with uh, a little private group. So make, make your account private to start with uh, until you're comfortable and ready to start sharing things. Um, I think I think just diving in is really important. I mean, we keep saying it, but I think you need to do that in order to feel comfortable with the tools and to start understanding how the platform works. And it's only then you'll really begin to, to work out what's working for yourself, but also what's working for your audience. I think most importantly, that's the bit. You've got to be creating content that's relevant and interesting and that people want to watch. Um, but if you start small and create things that you like yourself, that's always a good a good thing because then you'll keep doing it because you're enjoying it. So you need to enjoy it. And I love and that's fantastic and great advice. And I do have to ask this question since it's a government organization. Do you have to get pre approval before you do these or any kind of social media content? Are they a little bit more relaxed? How does that work when you're actually publishing that content and creating it? Yeah, we've got great autonomy actually as an organization and as a, an office. We are the authoritative source for weather and climate information. So uh, we're trusted that what we're going to put out is is correct and factual and accurate. And that's, of course, in our blood as a team. Uh, all we're doing is bringing that information to life, essentially. We're making it engaging. We're, we're understanding how people are consuming information um, and we're, we're serving up to them. 
I love that. I so love that. So how does your TikTok strategy differ from all your other social media channels? And what is your most, I would say, successful? I would say TikTok is pretty amazing, but what is your most successful social channel or what do you put the most content on? Which social channel is that? I think, so, I, sorry, can I just- Yeah, go for Emma. yeah I was just going to say that I think it's important to recognize TikTok, as I said, mentioned earlier, that it's a much younger audience than is typical of the Metal Fist. So that's something that's very different about that channel for us. Um, and obviously it's a lot, it's shorter form content um, and it's important for us to show our personality on TikTok. And it really differs in the way that we communicate things very simply. And um, we've got to be quite direct with the younger audience so that they can actually understand things. I mean, I myself don't have a meteorology background, so when I can watch the TikToks and understand them, then I, I know they're, they're doing quite well. Um, <laughs> but what I could probably say what's sort of more important for us with the different channels, because I know we use Twitter a lot for our warnings and things like that, so you could probably add there. Oh, I love that. And uh, I, I should have, and Ross, Ross, I would love for you to add as well, but kind of what I've experienced too, when it comes to weather specifically, Twitter is for like those tornado warnings or instant information you want to get out as fast as possible. But go ahead, Ross. Yeah, that's exactly right. I think it's important to, to consider TikTok as part of your suite. So it's effectively the Met Office brand experience without sounding too flashy. Um, but you've got to consider where people will be getting their information. And they might not just be seeing us on TikTok. They might be seeing us on Instagram or on Twitter. Uh, and like you say, a big difference between it is the regularity of posting. So over on Twitter, still one of our biggest platforms, actually. Um, we've got nearing 800,000 followers on there. Uh, it's very much um, kind of live, uh, reactive content that goes on there, talking about what the weather's like now and how it's going to impact people. Um, and we can post up to 24 times a day easily on that channel, uh, You creating bespoke weather content uh, around the clock, to be honest with you. Uh, whereas we're having to be, uh, we have to juggle resources to make sure that we're across all channels and have got a good presence across them. And I, that's, I love that because considering TikTok part of your suite of social media tools and how to engage and interact with your audience and potential customers, if you're selling a product or a service, um, is a great way to think about that when it comes to all the social channels. So I love that. Um, and with that said, Ashley Graham said, this is one of the best lives I've watched around TikTok. I am learning so much. Ashley, that's amazing. And that's because Ross and Emma are so wonderful and you're our show sponsor. I'm just going to say that. That. Um, and Deb is doing a great job. If you guys, she's got all the links um, to the Twitter accounts and anything I've mentioned, she has that all in here as well. Um, and I would love to know, ending really quick, um, because we're going to get ready. We have a fun virtual Halloween party in about 20 minutes. So everyone here who's watching, we're going to shift to our Facebook group, Social Pulse Community, with some really fun, epic giveaways. Um, but before we do that, though, I want to hear from both you, Emma, and Ross. Um, what are your final takeaways for people um, about TikTok and also any productivity, content creation, hacks, tips, apps that you can't live without? Maybe something on your mobile phone where you're just like, oh, my God, this is like the best photo editing or video editing app on my phone personal phone that if I'm out somewhere remote, I can still produce some high quality content. Um, for each of you, I would love to know what your kind of final thoughts are. My my thoughts are surround yourself by an amazing team, actually. So uh, you need people around you that are enthusiastic, uh, that are really into the channel. So uh, we've got an Instagram champion, we've got TikTok champions, and it's people that are, are using these channels all the time and really understanding how they work. So having people on your team that, that are enthusiastic and really keen to, to make a, a success of the posts uh, and uh, are keen to get stuff done and make things happen, I think that is absolutely crucial. I love that. Emma, what about you? I think I'd just not be afraid of it like there's there's so much fear time you could spend in fear like oh what if it doesn't work or oh, what about this and i think people look at people who've been successful and think that they've had it all planned out and have known how it's going to pan out and people don't you know that sometimes it is just about taking that risk and just going for it really um that would be my main advice is just just don't run away from it just just go for it and start trying things out you're only going to learn by starting to try things 
Um, and as Ros said, what's really helped us at Mount Office is a great team. It's been great. Everyone's enthusiastic and just being positive with everything. Even if something goes wrong, just accept, well, maybe my next video will be the one that's successful and just keep going. And Emma, that is so true because perfection is a fairy tale, like someone says in here. Um, Brian Fanzo says all the time, I'm a recovering perfectionist and I still like, I want everything to be perfect. But with all the content you produce on a daily basis, if you're a social media manager, content team, you, things are going to happen. Things are going to go wrong and that's totally okay. Um, so I love that. And we've got Tristan um, in the house who just shared the link to our Facebook group, um, which I'm so excited, Tristan. I want to see your costume. I hope everyone's already dressed in their costumes. Um, I'm going to have probably about uh, 10, 15 minutes to throw mine all together. Um, but really quick though, are there any apps? What do you guys use to create your content? Maybe if like within TikTok, it's probably mainly within the app, but you know, if it's video, Video or image content are there any different tools that you guys use that you absolutely love yeah we use the creative suite actually to be honest the adobe creative suite for a lot of our work as, de as a design team um we like you say we do in-app stuff that is, we find that actually the in-app stuff uh, a lot of the time gets more engagement because it doesn't feel like an advert or too polished so we find that that works for us quite well um, you can also use things like Instagram stories and take screen grabs of of the kind of um, tool, the, the, the designs that you're doing within that. So um, that's a really easy way of creating content for TikTok that looks like you've spent some time in a graphics package doing it. So take a screen grab, crop it down to 16.9 and then post it out and tweet it. Uh, and they're very, very quick ways to create content. But there are tons of apps out there. I love that. Um, Emma, anything you want to add to that? No, I just, I personally mainly use the Creative Cloud Suite. I don't use anything fancy. So I'd be interested to know in the comments if anyone's got anything fancy that we're missing out on, to be honest. And you know, that's great. So I know Ashley, um, she uses Splice, is an app I've downloaded, but haven't tried it yet. I would love feedback on that app if you've tried it. So I'm interested, Brian or Tristan, have you tried Splice? And um, especially for those content creators out there, for you guys, um, what are your top like two apps that you can't live without? I know Brian, um, you creates so much content on his phone. I'm just like, man, how does he do it? Um, but there's there's so many. I, I love Adobe Spark. Um, it's amazing. Um, Canva is the same way, and there's many other image creation apps. Um, but I like having any kind of movement in my images or something flashy. Uh, I you know still image sometimes you just have to do it that way. Um, but any kind of movement always makes it a little bit better easier for people to do thumb stopping content. Um, Tristan says we use Instagram edit was originally a photo editor. Yes, this is right. And we had Tristan on our show a couple weeks ago. Easel is also fantastic and over. Um, I don't even know how to properly pronounce that Deb. Um, you can maybe put how I'm supposed to pronounce it in there. Screen recorded. Okay. So Tristan is really great at screen recording all the different things, even typing out things, which was one of the best tips, um, that we've gotten from that. So Tristan, that is so great as well. Um, and really quick though, um, thinking of it's end of the month, guys, it's a little scary sometimes when you're just like, oh my God, the task of reporting the end of month reporting, what are we going to do? Well, you know what? Agora Pulse has something so fantastic, so amazing to ease your mind and not make it scary. When it comes to monthly reporting, it's called Power Reports. And if you're not utilizing it yet, you need to, because I promise you, as a person that's been on other social media tools, or not even having one, reporting was one of the biggest things that stressed me out. And now it doesn't. Now I'm excited. And now I love it. And this is why Power Reports. Feeling overwhelmed by working on social media reports for your clients or company? If so, you're probably longing for an efficient and easy way to create complete and customizable reports. At Agora Pulse, we felt the same way, which is why we created our latest feature, Power Reports. Now you can create customizable reports, automatically schedule them, and compare data from different periods. And you can do this quickly without feeling overwhelmed. Customized reports. You can create a report based on meaningful metrics. You can choose one or multiple social networks and one or multiple social profiles. Automatic scheduled reports. Schedule reports to be sent weekly or monthly. It works for single and customized reports. Customized comparison period. 
Select the customized date range for the report's comparison period. You can do all that without any extra work. In fact, you'll have more time and less stress in your workday. No more manual tweaking of slides or documents. No more days spent on reports alone. Best of all, your report looks great and your clients or colleagues are impressed. Creating powerful social media reports has never been easier. So try it on us. Power Reports by Agora Pulse. All right, guys. So don't get spooked by that monthly reporting, uh, quarterly, yearly reporting. Get Power Reports and make your reporting fun. With that said, are you guys ready for some fun trivia, some Halloween-based trivia, maybe even a little social media, and to just celebrate Halloween, relax a little bit, maybe even grab a a drink or two. I don't know. We're going to have some fun at three o'clock Eastern, which is seven o'clock um, in the UK across the pond. Ross, I see, which you guys can't see this. I can see though in StreamYard, he is prepped. He's getting ready to go. And basically his office is all decorated and fun anyway. So join us at Social Pulse Community, our Facebook group. Join us right now. We're going to be um, making sure that anyone who wants to join can. Ashley Graham is also going to be there. She's going to decide who has the most creative costume, you guys. You guys got to wow her because Ashley is brilliantly creative herself. So join us over there in about 15 minutes. But with that said, I want to thank Ashley Graham so much for being our show sponsor. But you guys, the fun doesn't end right now. Just go over to Social Pulse Community. Um, we're going to have a post with a link for you to join the live. Um, we're not gonna do a room because we're having some issues with um, Facebook groups and rooms, which as you know, things happen guys. Perfection is a fairy tale. So we're gonna be using a Google Meet uh, link. So we're gonna make a post in about uh, five to 10 minutes with a link for you to join us live so we can all be together and just geek out and relax and have fun. Um, and with that said, I wanna thank Ross and Emma for sharing their Friday evening before Halloween with us. And they're going to get in their costumes too. So you better be in your costume. If not, you guys have less than 15 minutes now. I'm going to get my costume on. Um, I do. I'm going to be wearing a wig. I'm not going to look like myself. I'm going to try and throw some paint on my face. So we're just going to geek out and have all sorts of fun. Tristan, Deb, Brian, all of them are going to be joining us. So join us, have some fun social post community. But before we go, we are having another amazing Social Pulse Summit in November, all focused on Twitter and how you can maximize it. We're going to have 27 breakout sessions, two live keynote speakers, and more. So many live interviews. It's going to be incredibly interactive and everything. And the best part about it, it is free. It's Wednesday, November 18th. So what you need to do right now is open that calendar, block that entire day off so you can just binge watch whatever you want. But the best part of it, we usually keep the videos for up to 30 days after the fact. So you can, you know, gradually watch all of them because 27 is a lot. So we'll keep that open so you can continue to watch them and learn. But we do this for you because one of our biggest goals is helping you, educating you so you can thrive and do the best that you can. So with that said, Ross and Emma, thank you so much for joining us and head on over to Social Pulse Community, guys. We're going to be making that post very, very soon. See you guys in a few minutes. Happy Halloween.